today's scriptures given to us is Ephesians chapter 6 verses 23 to 24. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 23 to 24. As I read through the passage, I hope that all of us will hear the voice of the living God. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Amen. Today's text and the last sentence of Ephesians goes, Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with undying love. It shows Paul's earnest wish and at the same time, a warm heart for those who read the letter. How do you read this sentence? What do you think as you read this sentence? At first glance, this sentence can be read like this. Those who love Christ with undying love will receive God's blessings. People may interpret grace as blessings. Also, we can think this way. Those who love Christ with undying love will not suffer. Those who love Christ with undying love will be blessed with children and uh, children's success. Also, those who love Christ with undying love will succeed in business and in what they do. Maybe those can be interpreted this way. So the blessings, all the grace can be provided by God in your life. Also, that can be a motivation for the faith. Of course, the Bible has such meanings. However, in the book of Ephesians, that kind of interpretation is not right. Then, what kind of meaning does book of Ephesians have about the grace? In our faith, we always say the may the God's peace with you or the may God's grace with you often. Maybe many believers like this phrase and also uh, use often to each other like uh, greetings. Then when you use that sentence, what kind of meaning do you have? You wish a lot for others? Or you wish like blessings from God for others? However, in the context of today's scripture, that is not the right interpretation. So let's think about this carefully. So Paul also commonly used these words of grace. In every letter written by Paul, we can see the word grace and the word peace. Grace is charis in Helaic, and also the peace is erene in Hebrew. Those two words are very familiar to Paul, and uh, Ephesians is no exception. So in the writing of the book of Ephesians, Paul says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So the book of Ephesians began like this, hoping for grace and peace for people. And it also ends with a prayer for grace and peace. 
the Karis and the Irene again. Then, what does Paul mean by grace and also by peace in the first chapter of Ephesians and the last chapter of Ephesians? First, the word grace is charis in Hebrew. And this word charis appears 12 times in Ephesians alone. So if we look at closely the usage of these words, we can understand the better. In the chapter 1, verse 6, Paul said, His grace is free for us. So he said, receiving for free is a blessing. So God gave us something for free, and that is grace, according to Paul. And also, Paul again said in verse 7, giving us the examples, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So, the first level of the grace is the forgiveness, forgiveness of our sins. That is rephrased again in chapter 2, verses 5. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. So now we know what Paul means by grace. That is, the grace that saved us, the grace that redeemed us and saved us. So that is included in the grace. And also, that is the most important meaning of grace. So in the chapter 3, Paul talks about another grace of God. He said, following the gift of God's grace given to me, I became a worker. Paul says, God's grace is mission he received. So the mission and the calling he received is a the God's grace. He said, and he also said, a calling to do his work is God's grace. And he also said that this grace of mission and calling were given to everybody. In chapter 4, verse 7 says, to each of one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So the God gave us proportionate gift to every single of us. A mission and calling are grace given by God. So this is the second grace, the grace which invited us to work for Christ. So there were the two grace of God in the book of Ephesians. First is the grace of salvation, and the second one was the grace of mission. Then let's think about this. Whenever he writes a letter, he says, may grace be with you. What does it mean? Is that the more history of redemption or the more work to do? I don't think so. That means, may grace be with you means that we have to feel the thrill of the grace that saved us. And also, we have to live as a person who is faithful, faithful to the mission given by God. May grace be with you means that, means not we have to have a more grace because we don't have enough grace, but 
it means we have to live with the passion of the redemption and the mission. That's the wish of the Paul. The grace of God spoken through Paul is the thrill of salvation and the thrill of mission. Today, we will have an a inauguration ceremony to ordain four elders. I think this ceremony clearly shows God's grace. So they and we felt the gratefulness and the thrill of redemption. And now those four elders will feel the thrill of jobs and missions given by God. So that is the calling and the mission given by God. It is not just confined to the position of elder. All of our positions are blessing from God, singing as a the member of choir or directing and accompanying the choir is a blessing. And also the guiding worship, serving for the car traffic is a blessing too. The serving for the flower team and also the serving for the handicapped church members and um, also the teaching children and the work for the offerings and the, all the missionaries are blessings. So as employees, as deacons, counselors, elders, interpreters, and pastors are all blessings. But interestingly, Paul links the grace of mission and a peace very seamlessly. In the book of Ephesians, the peace is Aaron in Hebrew. This word appears eight times in Ephesians. This piece used here emphasizes not the individual peace of mind, but the relational aspect. So here, the piece is described as peacemaking or a tie of peace. In the chapter 2, verses 14 and 17 said, for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. So the word peace, Eirene, in this text appeared three times. So Eirene here himself is our peace and also preached peace and also the peace to those who were near. So we can see the three times the peace, the word peace in these sentences. So the God broke, the, broke down the wall between God and us and that is a, the peace. So the what Jesus Christ came and did in this world was a making of peace. And this gospel of peace continues in our mission. Bible said in the chapter 4, verses 3, Ephesians, make every effort to keep the unity of spirit through the bond of peace. Also again, the verses 7, the Grace was given proportionately to each of people. So we received the grace, but now we are receiving the mission again, and the mission is to make a peace. So let me summarize again. So we were saved by God's grace, and the salvation was the breaking of the barrier between God and us, and as a result, we enjoy true peace and true grace. So 
after receiving the grace of salvation, we are moving on to another level of grace, which is a mission to make a peace, a mission to break down the walls. So the grace and peace be with you is very serious sentence to you according to the Bible and according to Paul. You have to experience the grace of God and you have to continue your mission under this grace and you have to realize what you plan and the, the plan given by God. And those are expressed in the grace and the peace. Then how can we enjoy the grace and peace? Can you feel it? Can you feel the grace? Can you feel the peace? So if we don't feel the grace and peace that much, then what's wrong with us? So the today's scripture gives one tip to us. So if we look at today's scripture, today's scriptures are talking about peace and grace. The peace and the grace. But between those two words, we have a one important word, word called love. In the chapter, sorry, in the verse 23, we can see the people with love with faith, and also in verse 24, it says to all who love unwaveringly. So it means the origin of, of love and also the quality of love. The grace and peace can be only enjoyed by the people who love God with undying love. Who can enjoy the grace and peace? Only the people who love God with undying love. Only those can the thrill of redemption and the thrill of the grace and mission. So love is important. That's the case when we work and when we come to church. If you love God, the grace is amazing and that you can feel the joy of the mission because you think that this mission is giving, given by God as a the grace and the peace. So if you don't love anything, uh, you cannot find any values in what you are doing. So when our God met Peter on the shores of the Lake Tiberia, he asked for love. He asked Peter, who denied Jesus three times. And the question was about love. He asked him, do you love me? He didn't ask, do you believe in me? He didn't ask, do you have hope for resurrection? It was not the question he asked to Peter. Only question he asked to Peter was, do you love me? And to Peter, the Lord said, feed my sheep and keep my sheep. He gave the mission to Peter. Those who have received God's grace should have love. Because they received the grace of salvation, so they have to have love. Because they receive the grace of salvation, they love God. And also, to fulfill the job given by God, we love God. So let me talk one more thing. At the end of today's scripture, it says, Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. So what do you think of these verse? Do you feel a burden from this sentence? 
because there is a phrase called love with undying love. Maybe you feel the weight of, heavy weight of this undying love because we doubt that we can love our God with undying love. Maybe this statement can be misinterpreted that only those who love with undying love can enjoy the grace. The people who do not love God, as always, cannot enjoy the grace. That's a misunderstanding, and many heretics try to target our wickedness uh, in this sentence. It is true that the loving God consistently is very difficult. Peter was like that too. Peter was the person who loved Jesus Christ so much. When Jesus said about the execution, Peter ran wild and was furious that such a thing cannot happen, and that he was rebuked by the God, by the Jesus. Also, when the uh, Jesus was praying on the hills. And Peter cut the ears of the people, executors. He loved Jesus so much, but he failed to love God with undying love. So Peter, Peter was like that. And how can we love the God with undying love forever? We can see the sceneries where the Peter met Jesus on the lake of the Tiberia. Uh, if we look at uh, these sceneries in Hebrews, uh, we can find some difficult um, the meaning there. He asked, the God asked him, do you love me with the agape's love? But um, he said, um, no, I love you with the Philo's love. He was feeling his limitation because there was an inconsistency of loving God so maybe he was lacking his confidence in love for God. And once again, when the Jesus asked him whether he loves him with the agape's love, and then um, he asked again the third time, do you love me with the Philo's love? And um, Peter answered back that, I love you with Philo's love. So he showed his lack of confidence in the depth and the persistence of love for God. So the Peter was like that, and it is a very difficult mission for us to love God with undying love. Then the, what does this verse mean? like grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. What does it mean? It doesn't say that there is no grace. It doesn't mean that there is no grace if you can't love unwaveringly, but rather this is a message of encouragement to strive to love with undying love as a person who received the grace. So it is impossible. It is impossible to keep this undying love continuously. But however, we have to make a resolution again and again. And that's what God wants us to be. We should not give up. We should make an effort to love Him with undying love and we take a mission, and we try to do work of God. And that's the attributes of the Christians. There is another interpretation. So if we look at uh, today's verse 24 in Hebrew, in original language, it goes like a grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ and aphasia. In 
incorruptibility. So these on a p a r t h a s i a is at the end of the Hebrew, Hebrew sentence. And now we have to think what this on a p a r t h a s i a for in the sentence. In terms of the usage, the new interpretation of the Bible is a the right interpretation. So most Bible say that the grace to all people who love God unwaveringly. That's the common interpretation. However, this a n a p a r t h i a can be linked to the grace. And the also German Bible interpreted that way. If we interpret this in Hebrew and in German, it says, May God's unwavering grace be upon all. All who love our Lord Jesus Christ. A new living translation followed this interpretation, saying that may God's grace be eternally upon all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. So I think that this interpretation is a little better because I'm not sufficient and um, I don't have confidence in the consistent love for God. And I doubt myself about loving God with undying love. Of course, I will make an effort. Even though I cannot do that, I hope that the unwavering God's grace can embrace myself. That's why I like uh, this interpretation more. And I think this interpretation is more like uh, Paul also. John 13 says, Jesus loved the people of the world at the end, but he loved them to the end. So that is the Lord who loved us until the end. And that is the shape of the Jesus Christ who came to the world and to save us. So I cannot do like him. I'm not sufficient, and I'm not a reliable person, but I will make an effort to love him consistently. And that is the very meaningful. So if you fall, and if we trip, we will have a unwavering grace with us. We believe that. Let's love. With this love, let's feel the thrill of redemption. And let's feel the thrill of the mission given to us. So reading you the Bible, the grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. May the grace upon all who love our Lord Jesus unwaveringly. Let's pray. Our loving God, we praise the grace of redemption you have given us. We are grateful for the grace of the precious mission given to us. May this thrill of the salvation and mission always live on. Please give us unwavering heart of love. May we all love the church, love the Lord, handle the task given to us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.